their acid to get all these conditions. So we're supposed to predict the product? Mm -hmm. Predict the product under acid catalyte conditions. Mechanism, right? Not unless you want to. And at, at this point, to save time, it would take too long to keep doing the mechanism each time. So yeah, we should, at this point, this would be a good chance to just practice writing the products. This is going to be a category two because it's only got one proton. So it has to look like this. Again, it might help to put in the asterisk to help keep our bearings. If necessary, we could use some numbers. Wait, category two? Did I misspeak? I should have said this was going to be category four. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. category four because it can only attack once. Remember, for nitrogen, the two choices are category three or category yeah. four. For nitrogen, it's category three or four, so I, I guess I misspoke. Again, we have to predict the products under acidic conditions. That looks good. It's going to take you a long time to do the whole mechanism. You might want to just try to draw the product. Yeah. Just a quick question. If we were to draw the mechanism, mm -hmm. would both amines attack at the same time? I think it would be best to show them attacking sequentially. Okay. That's why it would take so long. You'd have to show first a whole big mechanism for the first nitrogen and then the whole big mechanism for the second one. Okay. And it doesn't matter which carbonyl you attack first? No. Oh, yeah, I suppose, well, let's see, it looks like you have a bunch oh, of rings yeah. there. No, no, like this, sorry, yeah, a big, right now. It's like two lines attached. Yeah, this, uh, that way of writing it's not, might not be the simplest yeah. way. So the way I would do this is, first of all, in a complicated product like this, this is where we really need to start putting in some numbers. So I put in some numbers, one, two, three, four, and five, four, this diketone, and then six, seven, eight, and nine for the diamine. 
So here we have uh, one, two, three, four. Here's the uh, original diketone. Now we know, uh, what, what category are we going to be in here? Category uh, three. The nitrogens can attack twice, two category threes, because they both have two hydrogens. One thing to keep in mind then is that both nitrogens will lose both their hydrogens, because they're attacking twice. Now who's this nitrogen attached to? He's attached to the number seven. And who's this nitrogen attached to? Eight. He's attached to the number eight. And I see that the seven is attached to the eight. I see that the seven is attached to the number six methyl group. Yeah. And I see that the eight has a hydrogen and is attached to the number nine methyl group. So the most reliable way that we saw last term for drawing complicated products is using a lot of numbers as references. Otherwise, it's very likely that we're going to add or drop carbons or get the, get the um, connectivities wrong. So you want to make sure that this is what matches what you have uh, in your notes and that the nitrogens have lost both of their hydrogens over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this would be a case where it would take forever to show the whole mechanism because there's two separate category three reactions. So it's good to be able to go straight to the product. That's a good variation there. That would be more like a test question you might see. Oh, Make the O first. Why don't we talk through this one together? This is more complicated than the ones that we've seen before. Right. Now, we've just been talking about how nitrogens can attack carbonyls. However, that doesn't seem to help us too much because this doesn't have a carbonyl. The thing that has to jump out of this, though, and this is a very important technique that we have to get into for the exam, we have to notice that there's a hidden carbonyl. Oh. Well, let's point to the hidden carbonyl carbon. That's right. It's a good idea to asterisk the hidden carbonyl carbon. How do we know this is a hidden carbonyl? Because it's an alpha. There's like, uh, there's it's connected to two electronegative Two carbon atoms. bonds to a... Electronegative atoms. We were talking about that earlier today. If you have a carbon with bonds to two electronegative, with two bonds to electronegative atoms, a carbon with two bonds to electronegative atoms, that tends to be a hidden carbonyl. In fact, this is a specific type of uh, functional group we talked about before. What's the specific name? for this functional group? Ester. That would actually be this. So not an ester. This is something that we talked about one or two sessions ago. We talked about spe special functional groups where we have a carbon bonded to two oxygens. There's a bunch of names for carbons bonded to two oxygens. Hemiacetal, uh, hemiketal, uh, acetal, and ketal. So which of those names would we apply here? Hemiketal. Uh, First of all, it's definitely hemi and not full, because there's only one OR group and one OH group, half and half, one OR group and one OH. Um, but does this look like it came from a ketone or an aldehyde? Aldehyde. Because there's a hidden hydrogen, wow. right? This carbon here is only bonded to one carbon chain, and then there's the hidden hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So this is a hemiacetal, or better, a cyclic hemiacetal. You don't need to notice that to get this problem right. The key thing is that it's a hidden carbonyl, a carbon with two bonds to oxygen. Okay. Now, 
The key thing to recognize, remember, is that hidden carbonyls can turn into carbonyls. Um, so the first thing to do is to show what this would have looked like as a carbonyl. 